Welcome back. The global chief economist, Renaissance Capital, Charles Robertson, says Nigeria is losing at least $8 billion in tourism receipts. He stressed the need for improvements in airport quality and visa policy, Start, um, stating that Ghana, that Ghana, 25 times more successful than Nigeria, is attracting a lot of tour tourism revenue. Sam Adeleke is a co-founder at Travel Center, Africa, an innovative technology company providing travel software solutions. He also leads Nigeria, Nigerian chapter of Travel Massive Global, the largest, the world largest community of travel and tourism professionals. Now, remember, you can join the conversation. Tweet to us at Plus TV Africa with the hashtag Waze or at Waze Your Africa One. Or you could send your SMS to 081-8038-4663. Thanks for joining us, <laughs> Sam. My pleasure. Great to be here. Thank you so much. <clears throat> now, I think I'll start with the first question. Is it an, uh, an assumption that Nigeria has a huge tourism potential. It is real, very real. Let me start by reminding our viewers that we have two UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Nigeria, the Oshu Oshogbo um, Groove in Oshun State and also the Sukuro Cultural Landscape in Adamawa State. We also have as many as 22 waterfalls across Nigeria. Mm -hmm. In Lagos alone, there are over 11 places tourists can visit and explore because we have tourists from the US, from the UK, from China, day in, day out, even though um, we cannot compare the, the number of business to leisure tourism. To be honest, Nigeria is mainly business. People want to come do business, make money and get out. But we have been making efforts over the past few years to convince people that after making money during the day, why not let's go out at night? You know, so where do we go in Lagos? Number one, the um, Kalakuta Shrine. The Africa Shrine in Alausa. Also, okay. we visit Fela's House as well, which is now a national museum, the Kalakuta Republic Museum. Now, during the day, we visit Nikkei Art Gallery, which is the largest contemporary um, art gallery in West Africa. Art. There are about four floors of 5,000 Nigerian arts. Now, from there, we go to the Lake Conservation Center, which has the longest canopy walkway in Africa. Yeah. Interestingly, 41 meters, you are up in the air, walking and nestling with the, with, with the trees. To the right is the lagoon, to the left is Lagos. So that, that experience really gives you that, that um, natural, aesthetic, you know, urban feel while still in the jungle. Now, you're going also to the National Museum, which is on the Milan as well, and you have the Musan Center to your left, and then you move across the ocean to Badagri, which is the Badagri slave town. You know, so experiencing all of this and many more makes people think about the fact that actually Lagos is not just about traffic, about making money, about oil, about selling, also. about also. <laughs> In fact, uh, we had four American ladies who came to explore Nigeria a few months ago and they wanted to have the, the eco market experience. So we take them, or we took them rather to, to Lagos Island, Balogo Market, where they had this gay tying experience. It was so fun. Wow. And, and, people, and they actually paid for this. So people are coming to Nigeria not because we are developed infrastructurally, which is so, it's, it's so clear. But then they want to have the local experience. In fact, they also had the keke riding experience. And they were like, wow, they, they were so enthralled by the chaotic situation, so to speak. Yeah, which, we are tired, exactly, which we are I tired of. Which we are tired of. But, or but, to. Exactly, but which it's is our selling point. <laughs> yet, they also wanted to experience the shea butter um, creation because okay. volumes heard about it and what they what they buy in the US is the um, refined, artificial the refined yeah. one. So the one that Ori in Europe the artificial I'm sorry the original one but we couldn't go all the way to the north because the time they spent was limited. So these natural things that we have, the natural endowments are what people want to come into Nigeria to pay for. Okay, you're sounding all beautiful. <laughs> but I well. think, um, let me go with Isi, okay. then I'll come to Uti, then I'll come back to you, because I have one question for you. No it's, it's very sweet, <laughs> the way you're saying it. You've called all these names, some of them are actually strange to me. Really? So how well are we actually pre um, 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 creating awareness to, to the populace or to the uh, people of Nigeria to be and honest, abroad. To be honest, nowadays. the private sector has been the one doing the awareness creation. The federal government is just joking. Hmm. They are not doing what Ghana has done to attract some of the biggest names to their country. Now, um, Ghana did the year of return, and we are trying to duplicate it by saying the door of return. 
which only um, Abikena Dabiri is only trying to push, but it's supposed to be pushed by the president himself, because the president should be the number one image maker and number one PR person for the country. The Tourism country. is about image making, it's about, oh, come to Nigeria, wear Nigeria, stay in Nigeria, explore Nigeria. The, the, the president and his vice should be holidaying in Nigeria. Wow. You know, so if the government do not do things like this. We are just, the work that we are doing, because we're trying our best, our social media and those posting about this, doing videos, Tayo I know films, um, Samadeleke Travel Massive, Social Prefect, mm. Fumi TVP Adventures. A lot of people are doing work, but it's in silos. If, if there is a national effort like what Visit Rwanda is doing, what Magical Kenya is South doing, Africa. what South Africa is doing, yeah. you know, they, are, they are pumping Even millions the of dollars. The Gambia, mm. you know, you know, Botswana, Mo Morocco, Morocco has as much as 17 million tourists annually, mm -hmm. followed by South Africa, followed by, followed by Algeria. Nigeria yeah. is not even a part of the top 10. Who remembers this song on CNN that they used to go Malaysia? <laughs> Truly, eh? Yeah. 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 Yes. Grew their, their tourism. Mm. Everybody mm. wanted to visit Malaysia. Malaysia. You know. So, so I mean, it's, it's great that you mention all of this, and I personally was surprised when I googled tourist sites in Nigeria, mm. and that was the first time I heard of Sokka, and I, I know of the Oshun yes. Um So when I think tourism, you know, Lumoro, there's so many places that a we lot, have in Nigeria. A lot, a lot. Um, and when we look at the statistics, so the World Tourism Organization shows the revenue from um, different countries around the world, and we're talking about Nigeria being able to pull in $2.6 billion in 2017. And this is uh, over 100% growth from 2015, from, tw from 2015, 2016 to 2017. So we're doing something right. From everything that you're saying, it shows that there is some impact. But why can't we do more? So my question is, how does insecurity, or do you think that insecurity, the current insecurity we're experiencing in Nigeria, does it impact tourism? And if it is, how is it impacting tourism? Security is not peculiar to Nigeria. I mean, security challenges. For example, Lagos is safer than Joburg. My clothes were stolen at Joburg airports. People can be stabbed in Joburg in broad daylight. That cannot happen in Lagos around the airports. But why do we have that perception of Lagos as or Nigeria as a as a red um, flag when it comes to tourism? Simply because we have not Promote. promoted. We have not made significant efforts in laundering the image of this country. Kenya, which is one of the top five, has our, our Shabab, just the way we have our Boko Haram. Our Shabab consistently push their, their frontiers of, vis, of, of, of attacks to Nairobi, the capital, whereas Boko Haram is just in one small part of the north, north of Nigeria. So if we spend a lot more time on promoting the beauty of Nigeria, on telling people, oh, come to Whiskey Village, come to Bona Boy Town, come to, because other, other countries have spent a lot of money making these um, icons to be places, to, to, be, to be institutions. So people go to, to, to Tanzania, for example, to sleep in the Maasai village. I've been there overnight, you know, and we have these global icons that, that people need to, oh, come to Nigeria, we'll pay your expenses. I, I appreciate what Life Sports did with Cardi B during, in, in December, okay. in which, at that point, what that lady did within that two, three days she spent is more than what the federal government has done in the past 10 years, mm -hmm. you know, so doing all of, even Mexico, which is part of the top four in the world, has a lot of insecurity issues, course, but nobody's talking about it. So security is the least of our problems. It's simply pushing the frontiers of our narratives. Let people come and enjoy Nigeria. Do we have a national um, um, slogan, we don't. Enjoy Nigeria, explore Nigeria, this is Nigeria, you know, so those are things that if it's been pushed across board, not just by the tourism people alone, but by the presidency, first of all, because we, we the presidency does a lot. We, we are controlled by the government. Everything is not on government. So if that national promotion agenda starts from the top and trickles all the way down, security is the least of our problems. Okay, so I'm going to come back to you. You know, you were mentioning very beautiful places, you know. <laughs> and it's so interesting that if we were sitting here, just just the four of us, and if I said, oh, I'm going on a trip, right. I can bet you, that maybe minus you, because you're a Nigerian tourist <laughs> promoter, <laughs> two of them will ask me, okay, so where are you, where, are you going which to? country are you going to? Mm. Because Nigerians have imbibed that culture that it is only when I travel out of the country that I am going on holiday. They don't understand. Because I believe personally that if Nigerians actually invest in going on tourist visit within Nigeria, Nigeria. we don't need any or people to come and be tying tangy. Within ourselves, if we actually 
start to promote, oh, I'm going to, um, you called my state, Adamawa state. state, I'm going to uh, Olumorok, I'm going to, you Russian know, Tarab, Tarab, you know there's the um, Ikogosi waterfall and all of that. If we begin to promote it internally, I believe that, you know, it will go far. So what do you think has restrained us as a people from exploiting, you know, this tourist attractions that we have, you know, on a platter. Mm. We don't have to spend ticket money. <laughs> Awareness. Nigerians are big spenders. From the statistics last year from Nanta, that's Nigerian Association of Nigerian Travel Agencies, Nigerians spent about $1 billion on flights alone, outbound <sighs> to other countries. Now, guess what? Why will I want to go to Obudu when I, I can as well go to Dubai and spend 400 k and I know that this trip to Obudu, hmm, the flights might not take off well at the airport. I might get stranded. Ooh, that's it. The, 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 if I want to do roads, I'm not sure how many che checkpoints check I'll get points. through. So the infrastructural challenges, you know, living in Nigeria is an extreme spot in a normal way, in a normal day, because you're trying <laughs> so, to, you're trying to survive. Extreme. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and for us, even though we promote Nigeria, we also follow the money. We, we don't, why we try to promote, they say, okay, where do you want, these are the options, because we have to be real, people want to take a break, people want fresh air, people want to experience something different, and the roads and what people face, is, it's not helping the situation. Mm -hmm. So if we can, and that's why I appreciate coming to Prudence, so that we can tell the government that, see, people want to explore. Now, young people are taking the bull by the odd, because many adults from 40 upwards would not want to go through a trauma by the roads. But we tell young people that um, 25 to 35 will take breaks during the holiday season, during the public holidays that see, let's, let's do Thursday to Sunday, or let's do Easter, let's go from Lagos to Obudu. And it's not about destination, but about the journey. So we stop on the road, we, and we experience Akaroshu in Osho State, we experience the palm wine, we stop, spend nights. So we're telling people that forget about the traffic, Forget about the police. Let's just have fun. Let's play music. Let's play what games. thing you said, yes. it goes back to Uti's question. Thank you. <laughs> because the truth of it is, Security. I love road the trips. concept of staycations and road mm -hmm. trips. I love to drive. Everybody that knows me, mm. just tell me where you're going and when, and then give me your car keys and right. I'll drive. Don't have a problem. But the fact is, every time I go on a trip, uh, interstate trip in Nigeria, I'm traumatized. Mm. So the, this experience that you're talking about is lost for me because I'm there just like, God, another checkpoint. I need to make it through. I need to get to where I'm going. Mm. That's the problem. Because we've we not do talked about the potholes on your car. The right? accidents. <laughs> so there's the so much to worry about. Right. So how I, do I, we? I, I agree that these are the realities. Okay. But then we have to make do with what we have. And that is why we also take extra measures. Third people that see on this trip, we are having at least two security men, armed men okay. on the road with us. We are not going um, on this particular route. We're telling them that we are not traveling when we have this um, first Friday of the month when the major religious festivals hold. Yeah. So we, we try to navigate the problems and ensure that people still experience and have fun. Have so fun. there are places whereby we don't go by road, we fly. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes tell people, come, come join us from Enugu so that we take the bus to Obudu. We don't have to go through. So we, we are very also methodical by ensuring that places that will make you dis, uh, um, disoriented before you uh, get to the to, to destination, don't, don't pass through oh, it. So awesome. it's, it's a tough job, but That's someone has awesome. to do it. I'm really happy that, you know, I, honestly, for us at Ways, we love Nigeria. That's why, we, <laughs> you know, we have options to actually not mm. be in Nigeria. Mm. But we want to um, start the conversation and we know that eventually the people that need to hear this would hear it and begin to take steps, you know. Right. I hope the minister is watching because it's, the road network is a huge contributor huge to, to, to tourism. I personally love road trips. I can go from here to Adamawa State on road and I'll be happy <laughs> doing it, you know. So I think we can, we can do that. Thank you so much, Sam, for coming. My pleasure. My <laughs> Thank pleasure. you so much. So Victor Okai joins us after the break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.